Welcome to the next lesson in our season series. Birch trees are beautiful in any season, but I enjoy them even more in the fall. Their autumn leaves really stand out from the white birch bark. We'll use three brushes, six paints, and four techniques. Let's get started. Take your spray bottle, spray your pans of paint here, some water in your palette. So in this composition, we are doing birch trees. And there are four prominent birch trees. So let's start with doing those. Let's load your rounded pointed tip brush, wet it, get the bristles wet, and load it with yellow ochre, and make a line, and make four lines here. Okay, now just wet your brush and let's make that line a little thinner. And birch trees are not super thick, might be a finger width. So spread that paint. Now I'm working down the line of trees here and they start to dry. The paint starts to dry. You can just take your brush and wet it and that will activate the paint. And then spread it. Now it got a little bit light here, so right here um, you can reload your brush with more paint. I'm going to do that. And I'm just doing one side. So in this composition, I'm having the light come in this direction. Okay, so there's where the prominent trees are going to be. So let's take the hair dryer and dry it. Now, let's take our mop brush, and you can see part of the sky, and there will be some trees in the background here. So let's, so load your brush with ultramarine blue. Now we don't want it too dark. 
and let's add a little white to make it more of a sky blue. And you might have trouble seeing, seeing the lines on your trees, but just kind of estimate. And we're going to put a wash here between the trees. And then I'm not going all the way down the paper. You want to maybe just go two inches above. There's going to be some grass. Okay, let's stop and dry again. So let's go back and work on the birch trees here. So let's take your flat brush and we're going to, as I look at this, it's a little bit too wide to use. So I'm going to change my mind. And Sometimes when you do a painting, you might have original plans and then find you need to change them. So let's use our liner brush to develop some fine lines in these trees. Let's take some burnt sienna. Hold it with burnt sienna and some burnt umber. Okay, so there's going to be some lines and you want to maybe start on one side of the tree and then go to the other side and alternate that. And then you can use the tip of your brush to make a fine line like that and then maybe above on the other side there's a line that's thicker and you can use more the side of your brush to create and move it sideways like that. And then go back to the point. And then if you want a thicker line, just use the side of your liner there. And go along each tree and do that.
And we'll go back and make some of this darker. A lot of times watercolor is just building those layers and then intensifying them. And then load your brushes needed. Okay, now in the background there's some more trees and let's use the color, the mixture of the burnt umber and the burnt sienna and make some tree trunks. And then they need to have some branches on them. Okay, now the birch trees have branches and they tend to be darker. So let's use that mixture a burnt sienna and burnt umber for some of the lines here like right here there's kind of a dark line and then the branch goes off and I'm using the point of my brush on that and then there's another one right here that goes off And then these branches have some more branchings, branches that are branching out. And you can vary the line, like it's thinner here and then I made it a little thicker. So let's go to the tree that's next to it and add some of those. And this birch tree here needs some. Some over here. Now some on this last tree. And I would make them higher up, about at least halfway or a little more up the trunk, the birch tree there. Like that. Now clean your brush. And now let's use some straight burnt sienna. Sometimes you see that little burnt sienna show up on the tree. And it's amazing the colors that nature kind of creates. And I've seen that on birch trees. It's like part of the tree rust or something. And you know, that's nature's at work. So I'm going to add a little bit of that color just randomly. 
do it on each tree using your point or turning the side, whichever feels right in your composition. Now, clean your brush. Now, because of the light coming down, sometimes there's some gold. So let's take some of our yellow ochre and put some of that. Now, if it's too strong, like right there, it was a little bit strong, I can fix that. You just need to wet your brush and then dab it where the paint is and spread it. And I want to spread some of that color along the tree here. And I want to leave some of the white showing through. So I don't want to do too much. So again, spread that color. You might find it easy to start on the first tree here and then work your way over. Okay, so let's stop and give it a good dry. Okay, so now let's, one thing that's good with the flat brush is if you have areas that you want to wet. So let's work on some of the area below here where the blue and the white is. So you will want to take your flat brush, wet it and we're gonna wet that area. Okay, then let's switch brushes to round with pointed tip. And there's some grass below there. So let's start with a light layer of the yellow ochre. And if it starts to run, you can dab it with your paper towel if you don't like the way it's going, the direction your paint is going. And you 
We'll want to have it reach up to where the trees in the background start. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, the sunlight is hitting it, so I'm going to add a dash of the lemon yellow. Just like the sun hits it and it brightens up part of that area. Okay, now let's give it another dry. Okay, so now let's add some of the autumn leaves and let's start by using our mop to get the color in. And let's start with some yellow. And just dab some yellow kind of randomly. Now let's add some cadmium red and you can let it touch the yellow and if it runs that's okay that will actually give it a little more texture Now let's add some burnt sienna to the orange, so it's going to make it a darker orange. So you can see there's kind of a lighter orange and now there's a darker orange. So the cadmium red with a burnt sienna darkens and intensifies the color. Now let's stop for a minute and let it kind of soak in and settle. And a lot of times in my paintings, I need to stop and pause to see, see how the, the paint flows and goes and if I like it and if I want to change it. Now there are some puddling in here and I'm going to take my paper towel and blot it to kind of give it a more of a texture look to it instead of kind of a puddle look and that will you can get that by using your paper towel now the colors seem a little light but we're going to work on that so no worries 
Now I want to take some of that orange color down here in the grass. So let's take our cadmium red and put some of that color on the bottom here. Just kind of start to one side and work along and come to the other side. Now I think in the grass I there's some darker stalks so you can load your brush with a burnt umber do it pretty much straight burnt umber and put some dark strands there just a few Okay, I see a spot I missed. Okay, let's stop and give it a good dry. Okay, now let's go back into the leaves using our rounded pointed tip brush here and take cadmium red and some crimson to get a more intense color and spread some of that Now, some of this is still wet, and where it is still wet, I like it when sometimes the paint will spread. So, like right here, the paint is still wet. So I'm just, you can load your brush with cadmium red, and I'm going to put a dash there, and it will spread a little more. And if it needs a little more water to do that, you can add that to your brush. And then up here, it's a little lighter. And let's add some lemon yellow. And that kind of gives it some depth by adding that different color there. Let's put some lemon yellow down here. And a little more. So look throughout your painting where you think that it needs a little more depth. You can add some of that lemon yellow because the watercolor will fade. The colors will fade. Now 
needs a little bit more here. Okay, let's stop for that area for a minute. Let's use our liner and work on the tree trunks here. Now we want to use the burnt umber here and get a really, really, really dark brown. Almost a black. So to create that, we need to add blue to it. So let's add some intense blue to get that darker color. And you can always test it on your on your branch there. Okay, and let's add that to some of these tree trunks, darken some of that areas. And you can even go back and darken some of the branches there. And sometimes they have a little circle there. I'm going to put a little circle on there with some dots. I think these trees have a lot of character. So just go along and where you need the darkness there, like that. And then take a moment to step back. And if you want some areas, if you want some gray, you can just add a little water to that spot. Just drag the paint long I think I want to do that a little bit on this tree here okay now the very last Last step, we're going to add some splatters. So let's get our splatter shield out. And we'll use our round with pointed tip brush. And let's start with some cadmium yellow.
and start splattering on the top and work your way down. The splatters are representing the falling leaves as they're changing color. And you want to load your brush and just use your finger to tap. And you can start at the top and then work your way down. And start on one side of the painting and come down on the other. Okay, now let's do the same thing with cadmium red. And then the last color we're going to use on that is we're going to make a little bit of a mixture. The yellow ochre with a little bit of burnt sienna. That's kind of that brown color. But I don't want it quite, quite as dark as the burnt sienna, so I'm adding some yellow ochre to that. And then start the splatter at the top, come down to the bottom. Stop for a moment, look at it, and I like my leaves with the colorful leaves falling. I hope you had fun doing this lesson with me. Join me next time when we'll have some more creative fun to give watercolor a try. Please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and take a lesson or two. Take care, be safe, and see you soon. Thank you.